بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد The kalam Allah is the book of Allah we need to focus our attention believe in it bring iman practice on it and propagate it through the four corners of the earth Hassan Basri rahmanullah you say قرأت في تسعين موضئا من القرآن Approximately 90 places in the Quran, I've read that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stipulated risk and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken responsibility for risk for his entire creation. وَقَرَأْتُ فِي مَوْضِعٍ وَاحِدٍ And only one place in the Quran, الشَّيْطَانِ يَعِدُكُمُ الْفَقْرِ Where shaitan promises poverty. فَشَكَكْنَا فِي قَوْلِ الصَّادِقِ فِي تِسْعِينَ مَوْضِعًا in 90 places we doubted the Sadiq Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah who is all truthful and we've believed قَوْلَ الْكَاذِبِ فِي مَوْضِعٍ وَاحِدٍ And we've believed the liar in one place. So having yaqeen and getting the Qur'an right, we have one life, now's the chance. The ulama say that we need to make intentions and correct our intentions, that's the first stage when reading Qur'an and what is the sharaid and conditions for any amal to be accepted? Number one is that ikhlasun niya lillah to do everything for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala innama al-a'malu bin niyat and secondly muwafaqatu lima jaa fi shar that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us to do that amal with ikhlas like the hadith sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli Read Salat, not just don't read Salat, don't finish your Salat, perform your Salat only, but perform it how I have told you. A person is going from Johannesburg to Durban, he's bought the train ticket, he's got everything ready. Now he goes to the train station, he boards the train and he starts reading Salat al Hajj and making Dua. But every time the tear drops fall and he cries louder, he's going further away. Why? Because he's boarded the wrong train. He's boarded the train going to Cape Town. So he's done everything correct, but there's one flaw, the tariqah, the methodology, how it should be done properly. So it should not be that we are going to Jannah and we are on this train to Jannah and we think so, we got everything right. But at the time of death, a person realizes that they did not get it right. They end up at the wrong destination. So the niyyah, the intention and the way, the amal, how it should be done. Last we said, hudal lil muttaqeen, a need, need for hidayat, the desire for hidayat, the intention for hidayat. And thus hidayat will come to the muttaqeen. So second intention we should make is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should make us from amongst the muttaqeen. And the muttaqeen will be what? First condition is that they should be the people of Iman based on the strength of our yaqeen. Will a person become from a muttaqeen? Will they be eligible for hidayat? So the correct guidance will come to those who have taqwa. Qul huwa lilladheena amanu hudaw wa shifa. So the condition is for hidayat, amanu wa nunazzilu min al-Quran مَا هُوَ الشِّفَاءَ وَرَحْمَةُ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ So shifa and rahma is for who? لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ For the people of Iman. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ كَا جَاءَدْكُمْ مَوْعِذَ That the mu'idha and the lessons have come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who is this mu'idha for? And the shifa وَهُدَوْ وَرَحْمَةُ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ For the people of Iman. So Ibn Abbas Ibn Masood and other companions said Hudal lil muttaqeen means Nooran lil muttaqeen The light for those who have taqwa The light for those who have taqwa Ibn Abbas says Hudal lil muttaqeen Al mu'minun al ladhina yattaquna shirk bi They abstain from shirk Wa ya'amaluna bi ta'ati And they submit themselves 100% They come Unto the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another mention of Ibn Abbas of Muttaqeen. قَالَ الَّذِينَ يَحْذَرُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ He says that those people who fear Allah's punishment. فِي تَرْكِ مَا يَعْرِفُونَ مِنَ الْهُدَى 
which will result in them abandoning the true guidance and they recognize and they know that that is the way وَيَرْجُونَ رَحْمَتَهُ فِي التَّزْدِيكِ and they believe in what Allah has revealed Qatara has said what's the meaning of المتقين it's the same thing which Allah has explained after that الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ again يَقِينَ in the unseen وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ they establish salah وَمِمَّا رُزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ and they spend on their wealth ulama say salah is jani physical your body and yunfiqun is wealth so whoever's yaqeen is 100% on Allah or making effort on yaqeen and their themselves their life and their wealth is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then repeating again this point of yaqeen وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ that again bringing iman وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِينٌ إِيمَانٌ What's the fatwa? What's the mufta bihi? Ulaika ala hudam mir rabim. Now you are rightly guided. Wa ulaika humul muflihun. And these will be the people who will be successful. Amash asked Abu Bakr ibn Ayyash about muttaqeen. And he said, ask Kalbi. So I asked him. So he said, Alladheena yajtanibuna kabair al-ithm. That those people who abstain from guna is kabira, great sins, major sins. So I went to Amish and he said, uh, agreed to that. So taqwa is such that it will stop a person from the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the rewrite of Tirmidhi, la yablughu al-abd ay yakuna min al-muttaqeen. You cannot be from amongst the muttaqeen until a person does not leave ma la ba's bihi hadharam mim ma bihi ba's that you need to abandon that which is harmless out of fear of falling that which is haram and harmful so engaging in ibadah ta'a and abstaining from haram now hearing the word hidayah all the time the first type of hidayah guidance here which we have described the ayat is that iman which resides in the heart and Allah creates it in the hearts of His servants. And various ayat explain us, إِنَّكَ لَا تَحْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you cannot give hidayat, لَيْسَ عَلَيْكَ هُدَاهُمْ You cannot guide them, مَيْ يُذِلِ اللَّهِ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ Whom Allah makes astray, none can guide that person. مَيْ يَهْدِ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ الْمُهْتَدُ And whom Allah guides, then that is the person who is rightly guided. Another meaning is also huda, which gives the meaning of truth or giving direction and leading to the truth. So these ayat wa innaka la tahdi ila siratim mustaqim. So there's no contradiction in ayat, obviously. Naudhu billahi if the thought crosses a person's mind, but we need to understand Quran properly. O Muhammad, sallam, indeed, you guide mankind to the straight path. So, أَنْتَ مُنْذِرٌ وَلِكُلِّ قَوْمٍ هَادٍ That you are only a warner and to every people there is a guide وَلِكُلِّ قَوْمٍ هَادٍ وَأَمَّا ثَمُودٍ فَهَدَيْنَاهُمْ That Thamud, we show them the clear path فَاسْتَحَبُّ الْعَمَى عَلَى الْهُدَى But they chose, their preference was blindness over guidance. So a person has a option now, if both are conforming, one is we need to show the desire of Hidayat and number two is get Dua, so Allah sends us Hidayat. So we're saying that the intention of making of Tilawat of Qur'an is Taqwa. The root meaning of Taqwa is to avoid something which one dislikes. Azad Umar radiallahu anhu asked Ubay ibn Ka'ab that what is Taqwa? So he said, Ama salakta tariqan dha shawk, have you not? traversed on a path with his thorns on it he said definitely yes he said what did you do at that point in time he said I rolled up my sleeves and I struggled so he replied that that is really taqwa that we are living in this world gunas the thorns the evils the plotting of shaitan nafs will come around us now we rolled up our sleeves and we make an effort to protect ourselves from guna and sin in all aspects. Ulama have listed 22 benefits 
of taqwa and probably they are much more as well. So the Quran is Hidayat and through this Hidayat, this Kitab of Hidayat, a person needs to achieve this taqwa. They say there was a youngster who was a muttaqi and he went to study to one of the mashayikh and one day the Ustad while they were teaching them he told the students that فَإِنَّ الْعَلِمَ الَّذِي يَمُدُّ يَدَهُ إِلَىٰ أَبْنَاءِ الدُّنْيَا That a alim should not spread his hands and back towards people. There's no goodness in that. So everybody should go وَلْيَشْتَغِلْ بِسَنْعَةً Engage in some occupation, some trade, some profession, profession where his father was engaged. وَلْيَتَّقِ اللَّهِ فِيهَا And fear Allah in this matter. So when his mother asked me what my father used to do, what was his profession? She became shocked and she tried to avoid but he insisted and she said, okay, if you need to know, then I will tell you that he was a thief. So she, he said, but our, our Ustad told us that we must do for the occupation what our fathers do. وَيَتَّقِ اللَّهِ فِيهَا And we have to be cautious and fear Allah in this matter. So she said, وَيْهَكَ وَهَلْ فِي السَّرِقَ تَقْوَى In thieving, in stealing, is there any taqwa possible? But obviously the boy decided, hey, I'll just follow my Ustad. He said, هَكَذَا قَالَ لَنَا الشَّيْخِ Our Ustad told me that. So he went and he studied the field and he tried to master the field of stealing and thievery. So he decided now he's qualified. So he read his Isha Salat and he waited for people to sleep and he left for his occupation. So he started uh, with his neighbor and as he came there, he remembered what the Ustad said that uh, your neighbor, that uh, Nabi Alayhi Islam has encouraged that the neighbor has rights and you need to fulfill the rights of the neighbor. Awsani bijar madala jibril yusini biljar. So he realized, hey, you know what, I cannot harm my neighbor, so I will not do this here. So he decided to go to the next house. Then he came to an orphanage and he said that we've been warned min akli mali yatim to eat uh, the, the wealth of the orphans. So then he carried on walking and then he came across one big house and he see that this person's got a big house, he's wealthy, he doesn't need the wealth, maybe I should rob him as well. So he went to the door, he picked the door and he entered. He found it was a massive house, then he started searching for the safe and he came to the safe room, then he came to the safe, he cracked the safe. For what did I mean? He found it, it was a lot of gold and silver coins. He was going to take it, then he remembered. لا لقد أمرنا الشيخ بالتقوى وستاته لس تبي متقي ولا لا هذا تاجر then came cross to his mind لم يؤدي زكاة أمواله he didn't pay his zakat so maybe he has to pay his zakat first so he went in the office he found all the books the records and he said you know what I need to do hisab kitab now account for this year has he paid his zakat or not first but he was an expert accountant and good in maths. So he started calculating if there was any outstanding uh, zakat on this person. Then the Adhan of Fajr went and he said, Taqwa Allah taqdi bis salah awalan. How can I be busy with this when it is time of Fajr? So he went and he had a lantern on. So he put the lantern there and he went to the area and he started performing salat. So he made wudu and he was performing salat. So the owner of the house got up, he heard a noise. So he came, he was looking, he found that his safe has been opened. And then he found on one side that there was a person reading salat. So he went back and uh, he told his wife, Wallahi ladri, I don't know what's happening. What's happening here? So he went back to the person, he said, what, what are you doing here? Waylaka man anta wa ma hadha? Who are you? What are you doing here? He said, I'm a thief. As salat awalan thum al kalam. He said, shh, I'm busy. Let me finish my salat and my ibadah, then I'll talk to you. But go make wudu and read your salat also, otherwise I can't talk to you. So, uh, get ready and we need to read salat. So the person got worried and he became afraid. And he said, maybe this person is going to harm me. So he got ready for salat. So this uh, person, when he got uh, ready for salat, he said, uh, Wallahi a'lamu kayfa salla. 
that uh, he, he doesn't imagine somebody who's there to kill you and you're reading Salat, what type of Salat he's reading. So when they finished the Salat, he said, who are you now? He said, I'm a thief. He said, what are you doing with my books? What are you doing with the doors are open? He said, no, I'm just doing Hisab Kitab. And I found that six years of your Zakat is outstanding. He said, Wailaka, what, what's wrong with you? Are you mad? Are you crazy? Tell me your story. So the boy said, no, I went to Madrasa, I studied, and then my Ustad gave me advice. And uh, this is what happened tonight. So the wealthy person realized this person is speaking the truth. So, and he realized that he was, he hadn't paid his zakat and he was very good at calculations. So he went to his wife, he told his wife the entire story and uh, he made mashwarata. So he came back and he said, you know what? Will you marry me, will you marry my daughter? I will marry you with my daughter and I will make you my accountant. And I want you to keep a record of my books. And you've got a mother also, she's elderly, you need to look after her and I've got a big house, so I'm going to make space in the house for you. And in my business also, I'm old also, I need somebody to look after my business. I'll even make you a partner in my business. So the boy went back home, he told his mother, and uh, at the time of, uh, uh, they called the Imam of the Masjid and uh, they made the nikah. So taqwa is such a powerful action. Now here we've got the Quran in different ayat which explaining how to get uh, the, the benefits of taqwa. So first benefit is a person will get proximity and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah ma alladhina taqwa wa alladhina hum muhsinun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those who have taqwa وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the muttaqeen. Nabi alayhi salatu was was with Abu Bakr radiallahu an and the mushrikeen were outside and he said that if they look لَوْ أَنَّ أَحَدُمْ نَذَرَ If they just look below them, they will see us. So Nabi alayhi salam replied يَا أَبَا بَكَرْ مَا ذَنُّكَ بِإِثْنَيْنَ اللَّهُ ثَالِثُهُمَا What do you think about those two people? Allah is what? Them, Allah is the third person there. Allah is with us. So the ma'iyat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the muttaqeen. Secondly, easy, effortless trouble, free. A person will have a stress-free life. Whoever has taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make their matters very easy. So a person will have a month's work, Allah will make it done in a day. And somebody else, they will have a day's work, they will struggle months and months upon it, and they will struggle. So Allah will make all their matters easy. There will be ease in, in their worldly efforts, there will be ease and barakah in their time, there will be ease in their wealth, etc. There will be ease in their amal as well. Salman Farsi radiallahu anhu once a visitor came and he never had any food so he just left and he hunted a deer and he prepared it for the guest the guest became very perplexed and he said you just went and left as if the hunt the animal just flew from the sky how is it possible he said لا تعجب يا أخي هل رأيت أحدا اتق الله Do not become amazed Have you seen anybody who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes them struggle Allah makes them uh, struggle and strive that they become tired The muttaqeen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepares for them and makes things easy for them so there's two benefits, there's another 20 benefits. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the reality of taqwa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the hayidayat to understand and make amal on what has been said. The amal for today is that a person whose child passes away, two children, then in the narration somebody came to us Abu Hurairah and said, my two children have passed away. Do you know anything? He said, yes. Any person whose two children passed away, they will take them, حَتَّى يُدْخِلُ اللَّهُ وَأَبَاهُ الْجَنَّةِ That 
these children will take them an entrance into Jannah. In another riwayat, man mata lahu waladan fil Islam. The two children pass away, Nabalik child, and they are Muslims. Then, Adakhalallahu al Jannah bi fadli rahmatihi iyahuma. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter them into Jannah through His mercy. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.